But my task is really to, to also give you an overview of what is happening in the ASEAN, given that the ACB, ACB is an intergovernmental body of the ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. We facilitate and coordinate action by the ASEAN member states uh, in matters relating to biodiversity. My task as a program specialist is mainly uh, to assist uh, program implementation. We actually, I'm, I'm the coordinator of the ACB NBA cooperation. We have a close relationship with the National Biodiversity Authority of India. And part of my uh, realization in, in working with ACB since January 2018 is before that I was an, uh, I'm an active uh, law practitioner. I was part of the Philippine delegation to the CBD. Convention on Biological Diversity. So I met uh, Dr. Suzuki San. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, uh, assisted the Philippine government and even ASEAN, Southeast Asian governments and NGOs in dealing with these issues and, and other related policy issues. But anyway, uh, I'm here to give you an overview of it. Next, uh, my, my, my presentation will be along these lines. My presentation will be like uh, what is the state of ABS uh, globally in, in Southeast Asia. Of course, you being uh, involved in, in research researches uh, relating to biodiversity, you're very familiar with the uh, with the science of it. But of course, the policy uh, may be not so much. So I, I would just say that uh, in the most recent meeting of this OEWG. What is OEWG? The Open and Networking Group. One, first meeting. This is uh, all parties. I think you should also send representatives to the meeting of this OEWG. This is the group that will uh, develop the next uh, global biodiversity framework post-2020, after 2020. Because you may be familiar with the IEG biodiversity targets is set to end uh, by 2020. So by October 2020, in the next conference of the parties of the Convention on Biological Diversity, we will maybe or hopefully the the conference of the parties of the CBD uh, may adopt no, the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. So how we will conserve biodiversity until I think they're in for a longer term goal up to 2050. So basically, in fact, the, the buzzword now, you, you may uh, have joined in best assessment on transformative change. So it's like being in a religious revival. No? We all have to change. But what kind of change uh, we, we'll need, uh, we'll, do we need to do? I'm giving you my uh, perhaps a uh, sense of in the past three months that happened in August, this happened in September. I was just in Bogor. In Bogor, there's the Science Week C4, Center for International Forestry Research, and World Agroforestry. These two big entities have merged, and they discussed this in Science Week, September 9 to 12 in Bogor. Uh, I was hoping that they will also discuss ABS, as a part of their uh, discussion, these are the C4, ECRAF, World Agroforestry Scientists. In fact, they had a global conference simultaneous for two, no, three days. I wonder if it must be tiring for the Nairobi participants because, like that in that screen, that's from the Nairobi, we are in Bogor. So, simultaneously for three days. Imagine Bogor, 9 o'clock in Bogor is 5 a.m. in Nairobi. And so you can just imagine the, the, the energy, the, the effort needed so that uh, both groups in Kenya and Bogor have to discuss. But you, you can uh, attribute it to the dedication of the scientists that they stayed on. Because after we finish in Bogor at 5 p.m., some uh, speakers uh, in, uh, in our table, uh, in craft scientists, have to stay on 
because in in, Bo in Nairobi, when it's 5 o'clock in Bogor, it's just, uh, what time is it? Uh, I think around 2.30, so they have to continue. Even when we're having dinner, the, 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 the friends that we met who are supposed to have, be having dinner at 7 p.m. are still having presentations uh, online. So uh, I think it, it, may be, it may be a good idea to try. No? But of course, you will miss uh, enjoying the place if you will just uh, do it online. But that, that's supposed to be the way to you to cut on greenhouse gas emissions to become carbon neutral. I think that's what C4 will now advocate. But again, the, the point here, the scientists never discussed ABS. I think the, 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 the issue there is on climate adaptation, of course, forest fires. And of course, the rights of indigenous peoples, because I, I never realized C4 have more research on how indigenous peoples have, uh, have to fight for the condition of their rights. And this was just last week. I was in Yogyakarta. This, uh, this is an NGO conference. No? And their topic is, uh, if you can read it, is on indigenous knowledge. And here, perhaps when I was invited, I was sent by ECB, uh, perhaps this is the group that will discuss the ABS. No. <laughs> in fact, when they said ABS, what? <laughs> in fact, there's an Indonesian, in fact, I, perhaps let's discuss this, no? no I, I, I'm still getting some details. Uh, we, we've come across, no? in fact, we received some inquiries from, from scientists uh, about the Indonesian law on research that uh, allegedly, I don't know, I haven't seen the law, so I cannot uh, comment. But I also asked this from these NGOs. But the priority is on mining, because I think that's where, they're, they're, that's where they say they are being displaced. It's because perhaps ABS is not really uh, disruptive. Because what do ABS scientists do, bioprospectors do? They just take pictures, interview, they don't cut the trees, they don't extract the soil. So maybe you're not uh, seen as bad because uh, like, unlike the miners, you know, they go to the communities. And in this conference, these are uh, 140 uh, indigenous peoples and indigenous people support groups from seven countries in, in Southeast Asia and Taiwan. There's even Timor-Leste and National Human Rights Institutions. Sadly, they're not familiar with ABS. So you see, uh, in the past three months, uh, while the world is discussing the open-ended working group, uh, discussing how to go about post-2020 global biodiversity framework, ABS is not discussed at the global. In this discussion, the ABS uh, as an issue has not been mentioned explicitly. But you can notice whenever the negotiators will say the third objective of the CBD, the third objective. And the third objective of the CBD is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits from the utilization of genetic resources, which is just a very good example of uh, really implementing it thoroughly down to, the, down to the local level. And I'm amazed at how thorough Though I think the, the bureaucrats have only acted because there's a Supreme Court ruling. Because also even the bureaucracy has been, uh, I would say, not that uh, active in implementing. <laughs> That's why they, they've been rushing, you know. In all the 16 years that you've been saying, sir, I think there's a Supreme Court ruling that uh, everyone should implement this. So I think this is the case of ABS uh, worldwide. I would say, uh, as I'm being exposed to in ASEAN. So here is what we are doing at the ICB, ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. We have completed this uh, project on developing ABS policy and institutional framework. In fact, that's why Vietnam has a good working policy now on ABS. We, we help, uh, we, we did workshops, we consulted with them. Now, PDR and Myanmar, I think, have still uh, some institutional uh, issues. It's basically the distribution of power among various agencies. Because ABS is a multifaceted uh, issue. There are various agencies and authorities involved. 
And even if it has been over 20 years now, uh, almost 20 years, or more than that, if we count EO247-1995, it's over 20 years for Philippine regulation, of course for CBD-1992, that's over 20 years. Uh, as in all human institutions, which is establishing regulations, uh, still it's a difficult effort. That's why we at the ACB are continuously with the help of the Indian government. There's an ASEAN India Green Fund provided uh, by the Indian government. So part of that is uh, ACB NBA. Not the one, uh, that, not the NBA that's having problem with China, but National Biodiversity Authority of India uh, with, with the agency that Dr. Sharma has presented. So we have this uh, workshop. And in fact, TKDL, the traditional digital, traditional knowledge digital library, is being uh, presented by India as a model. And in fact, as uh, I have noticed, uh, in this uh, capacity building exercise, almost all ASEAN member states have have uh, developed are developing community registries on traditional knowledge, traditional medicine. And we have examples of, uh, of uh, community ABS. What do we mean by community ABS? It is, uh, we have documented examples of communities that have uh, undergone uh, work with uh, developers of bioresources bio and went on to develop products. And we have found out that there's also a strong application of uh, geographic indication, uh, a form of intellectual property. In fact, in Cambodia and in Indonesia, they develop uh, coffee products and then they apply geographic indication to it. So there's an emerging alternative to ABS, where a community can, can commercialize the product and get benefits also from it and also the company. And then, so we will continue our workshop. Uh, so now, those ASEAN member states that have committed to set up traditional knowledge digital libraries will now look at the nuts and bolts on how the, the, perhaps the program, uh, programming interface of the TKDL is developed. So that's part of the capacity building activities that the ACB is doing for the ASEAN member states. For the Philippines, uh, I've been involved with this in the early stages. So now we are we, there's a Philippine uh, project which identifies specific uh, biological resources with a developer with an industry, and now I think they're discussing it uh, in a project. Uh, what's it called? PPG uh, project program. This is for further. No, it's a, it, I think it's facilitated by UNDP and BNB. If BNB were here, they, they can give updates on it. But they invited ACB to attend this workshop. But I wasn't able to attend. I was in, uh, in India. But in, in my work in, in, in the ACB and BNB cooperation, I came across this uh, website set up by a Filipino from uh, Quezon, Chao Quezon. And then I raised this matter with the uh, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development. Because this is the agency of the Ministry of Science and Technology which uh, funded uh, the establishment of the TKDL. And then I raised it earlier than, uh, because we studied uh, this, uh, this website and it has, I think, better uh, I would say my, my colleagues in the, that are in charge of setting up databases, they say it's well organized. But then I asked them, uh, don't they have a problem in, uh, in this uh, being set up like a comp competition to TKDL? But PCAs are already said, no, I think it should be better for. Uh, for uh, <coughs> for uh, researchers to be aware of it. So, uh, the sign of five minutes is being flashed by, uh, so I'd rather cut my, anyway, so I just uh, put it out to you. Do you think, is there anything wrong with this? Can I get a response? 
or you don't want to respond? No response? Okay, I know that. <laughs> so again, the ethical considerations in ABS remain the same, no? PIC, ABS, and then I don't know. I'd like also to ask this to you again. Do you think you have you are you have reconciled yourself to these two ethical considerations now? Maybe in India, yes. But maybe we graduate acceptance. So maybe you do a workshop for that. So globally there, there's no movement on what to do. But in uh, C B D, in the trade off for having a global virusing framework. There's a discussion on digital sequence information. I think that's where the discussion is now. In fact, uh, Dr. Suzuki, we can come up with a session on that later. So, but for now, what I will just say is that uh, this is from a speaker from uh, Peru, Emmanuel Ruiz Muller. For all our problems of ABS, maybe let's just leave genetic resources and information. And of course, the point here is that perhaps uh, the point here is that perhaps let's just come up with some uh, percentage from the research who meet to it. No? So another development is this uh, what I committed to, to also present to discuss to you. So it it was uh, I noticed that among among ABS regulators in ASEAN. Because of the constant change no, of, of their bosses, they're always new to their office. And then when they talk about APS confronted by you being applying for, his, for resources, they, they usually don't know what to do. So perhaps uh, maybe we should compile it for ASEAN. In fact, with NBA, they help. No? We also, we're also putting NBA regulations here. Uh, for group learning, for building up ABS practice, it's similar to patent examination manual. Where patent examiners have a common guide. So I think it's time also to, to, to elevate the level of the ABS regulators. So this is an example already. I, I, I am currently revising it. So now, for all these countries at least that have provided information to us, uh, India, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, we actually have a lot of 22 exceptions that are not covered by ABS. So uh, we just have to be familiar with that. But of course, we will zero in on FAIC, TK, and perhaps benefit savings in the table that you presented. We will compare it so that some others have comparison. Maybe it will be useful also for you, but our aim is for regulators to be familiar with it. So we will revise it. And uh, we were circulating because this is, we are circulating to the ASEAN member states for their uh, validation. In fact, Thailand and Indonesia just came up with the regulation. So, for now, another task that was assigned to me is perhaps why don't we develop an ASEAN guidelines on fair GRs as information? So, the idea here is perhaps discuss why don't you just commit already to provide the uh, funds? So that it will be easier than there's a fund. In fact, this is an old idea they think back from two decades ago, even also the global multilateral beneficiary mechanism, that may be a way to resolve the discussion on DSI. So this is an initial uh, outline. I think I don't have time now, but uh, we will be ready for uh, Q&A later. So thank you very much. <laughs>